Hey y'all, happy Easter weekend. So on today's agenda is trimming the water sprouts off of the snowball viburnum. Uh, they're just needed. They've got some water sprouts coming up. Not a whole lot, but just want to get those cleaned up. And then um, in the raised beds back behind me, I will be planting some seeds because I am uh, a little bit behind on getting the seeds in the raised beds because those just got completed earlier this week. Um, and I also need to go get some plants uh, to complete a window box. So let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, so I am back here at the Snowball Viburnum and you can see all of the water sprouts that are coming off of some of these nodes on these major main branches. And so I'm just gonna get those trimmed off. There's no, nothing special about them. Um, there's a lot down here at the base and they will kind of suck the nutrients out of your tree or your shrub, whatever, whatever we're talking about in regards to plants. But um, just gonna get those trimmed off. And sometimes water sprouts can mean injury. Sometimes it can mean soil compaction. Sometimes it can mean that you do have an issue going on. However, these this snowball viburnum has been looked at by Arbor Image and there's nothing going on with this tree. It's just producing some sprouts and maybe it was from the ice storm a couple of years ago. Uh, who really knows? But overall, this is a very healthy uh, snowball viburnum and I'm just going to get these trimmed up and it'll look a little more sightly. So here we go. Okay, so you can see all these water sprouts right here and I'm just gonna get them trimmed off you can tell this is from um, an old pruning cut uh, from many many years ago more than likely but it's just shooting out some water sprouts so I'm just gonna clean those up and you really can't do this incorrectly just make sure you don't get into the node or into the branch the main branch itself so And some of those little ones like that, I'll just kind of pull off with my hands. All right, and that is the final product there. So I'm just going to do that same thing on the rest of the suckers. So got all of the suckers cleaned up from down on the base and along some of the outward branches, some of the suckers removed as well. I did go and go ahead and leave those back behind the snowball viburnum to go ahead and act as compost. Since this tree doesn't have any disease or anything going on with it, it is okay to leave those back there and let them compost. If you have water sprouts from something else going on, uh, it would be best to figure out what's going on before you leave those back there to compost in the dirt. Uh, but overall, I think it looks way better and, um, you know, this will just be a spring maintenance chore on this viburnum. And so there we go. Okay, so I'm getting ready to start the remainder of the seeds that I didn't um, sow indoors. So I do have the indoor seeds that have already germinated. They've been hardened off. They're ready to go outside. And then I also have all of the seeds that I elected to direct sow. And so I'll go over those with you, but I also wanted to show you some of the veggies and fruits that we'll be planting out here okay. as well. So here's what we're working with on the seeds that I sowed indoors. The dianthus are looking pretty good. You can see the squirrels got into a couple of those cells. I've been leaving these guys out to harden off um, and the squirrels got in them and it's just something that we're gonna have to deal with. It's something that we dealt with a little bit at our previous house also. So. You know, you just kind of got to roll with the punches and take what you can get sometimes. And here is the Facilia experiment. It wasn't a total failure, but mostly a failure. You guys probably remember in one of my previous videos where the Facilia germinated literally within two days. And so it was in some cell trays with some other seeds that weren't ready to be put outside and hardened off so they weren't getting quite enough light and so I just went ahead and mass planted them and upsized their pots a little bit and I lost a lot of them but I still have quite a few of them that I'll be able to plant and by the time these mature I'll have it'll be enough so okay so back here 
in these two raised beds. These stay a little bit protected from the sun a little bit longer, but I can assure you that these suns are these beds are complete sun. In the afternoon, they'll get hot afternoon sun. And so I'm going to plant the sweet peas here. I don't know what we're gonna do with this trellis. Some people have asked. I, I thought about repurposing it for the sweet peas, but I don't know that that's gonna happen. So when I, when I unpot these sweet peas, I'm going to be as careful as possible with their roots and as gentle as possible. And these will be quite a bit easier over here, but I'm going to plant these all along the back row here. So as uh, they can grow up on a trellis and kind of provide a backdrop uh, versus just a plain fence. And I have some cabbage there and I have some dill and I have two kinds of peppers and I realize that these will probably cross pollinate, but I'm not too concerned about it. So pepper mucho nacho and some pepper serrano. And then over here, we have some cilantro. I have three cilantros. We eat a lot of cilantro. And here I have ever bearing strawberry. And so I got two of those plants and I planted them. I'm gonna be planting them near the front so that they can spill over the raised beds. I figure the squirrels are gonna beat me to most of these and I might end up having to put a net over some things like tomatoes and some of these strawberries. But I do have three variety of tomatoes as well. This one's the Sweet 100. This one is the Tomato Steakhouse. And this one is tomato sugary. So these are quite a bit taller than I would like them to be at this point. So I am going to plant them a little bit deeper than they are currently in their containers. And I'll go over that with you guys. Got some romaine here. I, I realize that this is a cooler weather vegetable, but I purchased it a while ago and I need to get it in the ground and kind of get what I can get out of it at this point. And then purple sage, this plant kicks my butt every year, but I love the smell and I love the look at it, of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it another shot. Maybe I'll have the right con soil conditions in these beds. So that's kind of what we're working with as far as, well, I mentioned the sweet peas over there. Oh, and some arugula here. But yeah, that's kind of what we're working with on vegetables and the fruits of the strawberries. And I also have a bunch of seeds to direct sow out here as well. So I'll go over those right, with you guys. So I've got a, quite a few Xenia seeds here. I've got some from Johnny's and some from Eden Brothers and some from Ross and Company. So I've mentioned before that I really like Johnny and Eden Brothers because Eden Brothers gives you the information on the front and Johnny's gives you the information on the back. And most of all, I like that Johnny's has a resealable flap that comes in really, really handy. So this is just a, a mix. I have no idea what zinnias those will produce. Um, some cactus flowered mix zinnias, some giant purple, because you know I have to have purple, and some cupcake pink mix there. And then next I have baby's breath, and baby's breath needs to be scattered on top of the soil covered thinly with a sixteenth of an inch of topsoil. So if I, this is a variety that needs light to germinate, and so I would normally use vermiculite, but I don't have any vermiculite on me, so I will be just using some seed starting mix that's really light and fluffy and scattering on top of those. Um, here we have some corn flowers, uh, plant a fourth of an inch deep, uh, direct sow after last spring frost. We are past that frost stage. So one of my decisions on what seeds to direct sow and what to start indoors were anything that was recommended that it get direct sown outside, I decided to go ahead and follow those directions. And I have a lot of Cosmos here and I'm so excited about the apricotta. Um, that is what I'm most looking forward to. There is a double bonbon there and a white fizz. So I'm super excited about this apricotta from Johnny's and the Cosmo apricot lemonade from Eden Brothers. And so you can see here, plant a fourth of an inch deep, plant 12 inches apart. I probably won't do that. I'll probably go a little bit closer, but direct so after last frost, don't cover with more than a fourth of an inch of soil. So not um, a variety of seed that needs light to germinate. And then here is the Quaker grass. So in the previous video um, of me sowing these seeds indoors, 
I was very skeptical on the Quaker grass. I didn't think any of it was going to come up and it produced really, really well. So I decided to only seed half of those in that tray and direct sow the rest of them. So I have those to seed as well. So yeah, I think we'll have plenty of work to do to keep me busy for the next couple of hours and I'll bring you guys along for the ride. Okay, so I've kind of got everything laid out by height and I'm not probably going to space these appropriately because I'm working with a finite amount of space back here and the number of seeds I have. You can see that I have a Cosmo packet over here on the corner. We'll see if um, I get to that. I might plant that in the center row because I do have uh, drip tubing all along the edges here and then there's two strips in the center as well. So um, we'll see kind of how much space I have left and we'll see if I can get those planted or not. But here we go. y'all done for the day got everything done back here that was on the to-do list so let me give you guys a tour all right and so you can see i'm watering back there because the irrigation while it is in place in the beds it hasn't actually been hooked up we're still waiting on that so i'm hand watering some things back here as we speak um this front bed has asters dianthus celosia phacelia and some Quaker grass. So you'll remember from one of my previous videos, I didn't have high hopes for the Quaker grass when I seeded it, but it came up really, really nicely. But I had saved half of the seeds because I didn't have high hopes for it. And since it turned out so well, I went ahead and seeded the rest of that Quaker grass right there. It has little fuzzy tails on it and it looks really good in flower arrangements. So I wanted to plant some of that. This bed is the bed that I'm most excited about. It is filled with Cosmos. And in this front left corner are the apricot lemonade, which are the ones that I'm most, most excited about. Back here in this corner are the bonbons. In this corner over here are the regular apricot. And then in this front corner is fuzzy white. So here in this front bed, this entire section right here is baby, baby's breath white. And then in this little section, I planted corn flowers and then I have this whole front section right here um, available so I'm not sure what I'm going to plant there. This section right here is the zinnia section and this seed mix packet had so many seeds in it so I just kind of haphazardly scattered them all along this front quadrant and then all along the middle so we'll see what we get out of that but this right here is the cactus flower zinnia mix in this section and then over here in this quadrant is giant purple and then this section is cupcake pink mix something else i should mention is any of the containers that i get from buying plants i will save all of those for starting seeds next year and upsizing pots so back here I have purple sage, some romaine, a sugary tomato back there, and I know I've already gone over these, but I wanted to go over them one more time. Um, I planted some kale here, and this one is a steakhouse tomato, and I planted two ever-bearing strawberries right here, some cilantro in this section, and then this one is the sweet 100 tomato 
I didn't get to these because I ran out of room. I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do with those. Here, planted some arugula. This is the Serrano. And this is the Pepper Mucho Nacho. And then I did plant sweet peas all along the back there, as you can see. Some dill, cabbage, and that is it for this bed. So that is what I have as far as these raised beds. As I mentioned, I still have this quadrant up here that is available, but I will keep you guys posted on what I'm gonna plant there. And as for me, I'm gonna go inside, take a shower, and kick back. Thank you guys so much for watching. Okay, so I did wanna show you the process of how I bury the tomatoes. So this is a steakhouse tomato, and you can see right here that it's fairly leggy. So I'm going to bury it up to about right here where you can kind of see it has a little bud coming off there. So I'm gonna bury it a little bit deeper. It'll make for a little bit of a stronger plant and hopefully we'll get some higher yields out of it. Okay, so you can see, let me go ahead and fill this in here, but you can see how I buried it quite a bit higher than it was in its nursery can. So hopefully, like I said, we get a stronger plant with some higher yields. Oh, and one last thing, because I know people will ask, um, I thought I had some markers, but I couldn't find them. So I just left the seed bags in place, the seed packets in place, so that on Monday when the stores open back up, I can go get some markers and put them in place. Over here, I planted everything pretty much in quadrants. So over here, the name to the plant that it's in front of is on the front and then the name to the plant that's over here in the next quadrant to the right is on the back of it. So I will make everything its own individual um, tag, but I thought I had some and I just didn't have any. I have no idea where they are. So I will get around to that, but here you can see that I used the tags that were on the plants themselves. So yeah, anyways, that's what I got. Thank you guys so much for watching and enjoy your Easter weekend and enjoy your family and enjoy some relaxing time.